The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Firefly by Lecky webinar series. This one is the things that you need to know about Playpack, and there are three different parts to it. So this is part one, which is all about starting strong in three essential early positions. So it's how you can achieve these positions um, using the different components in Playpack. So I'm going to be introducing Nick. Say hello, Nick. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and I've got Claire Canali here as well. So Nick, is um, he's a physiotherapist, um, and he's founder of Flying Star Children's Therapy in Yorkshire in the UK. And I've got Claire Canali with me here as well, who is um, Firefly by Lecky's clinical manager. Hi, everyone. So you'll remember, Claire, if you were at the UPSI um, therapy program webinar, which was our first one. Um, and my name's Claire Greer, and I am just going to be moderating today. So um, we're going to be fielding your, your different questions. Um, as we go through this time, it's slightly different from the last one, and I'll explain that in a second. So what we want to do today is we want to explain how the early building blocks um, within child development all link together. So Nick is going to run through that um, and explain how, how everything works. Um, so one thing sort of leads on to another. Um, we're going to outline how Playpack can be used to um, practice positions in the three essential early positions, and those are back lying um, or supine, tummy lying or prone, and sitting. Um, and then lastly, we're going to answer as many questions as we possibly can in the time that we have. So we're going to do that. So at the end of the back lying section, we're going to take some questions on back lying. So if, if anything occurs to you as we're talking about that, type it into the questions box that you see that you should see on your panel and we'll, we'll address as many as we can and if we don't address them um, we'll, we'll come back to you after the webinar there's a note kept of all of the questions so if, if you don't get yours answered don't worry we'll be in touch over the next few days um, so that's for me to take over isn't it so Nick yes if you wouldn't mind that's that's yeah. for you to begin I'm just the. I'm not sure if you're sharing your screen at the minute because I'm not seeing the presentation. That's all. Oh, okay. Hang on. Let's see. There we go. Got yes. it. Okay. You didn't. Nobody missed much. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start off, and I'll apologise. So I'm Nick. I'm, I'm the physiotherapist, as uh, Claire said, um, and I'll apologise now because I will always revert to my language of supine instead of back lying, and I'll use uh, prone probably instead of tummy time. But but those are that's the uh, language that I'm just used to saying. So I probably won't go over the, the slides word for word. Um, I'll try and paraphrase and explain things in my way. Um, but if there is if I do miss anything out that you're wanting to go over, then as Claire said, please feel free to ask questions. We'll cover questions at the end of each section, but then also a little bit at the end for any that we miss. Um, so going on to backline, why is it important? Um, it's when you take the baby when you take your baby home from hospital, it's the first position that you'll spend that they'll spend most of their time in. Um, it's the easiest for interacting with them when changing their nappy, when having a bath, when doing all sorts of play. Laying on the back is the easiest thing to do because it offers the most amount of support. Children, when they first come home from hospital, tend to be quite flexed and bent up with their arms um, and their legs away from the surface because their muscles are actually a little bit tighter. Children with physical needs often don't have this, so that's why we use um, the play pack or equipment similar to it to help achieve um, within that position. So, although it's a very supportive position, it does encourage movement of both the arms and the legs independent of each other. So we'll see babies stretching initially with both arms and both legs, but then as they get more used to it, they'll move individual arms and legs. Um, it helps babies find out where their middle is because their head can be supported in the middle looking up at your face, at, at the world around them, and also helps them with their arms coming forwards. Um, even though it is a very supportive position, it can be very, very active as well. So that's why it's a great position. So moving on to the common difficulties that we see, um, as I said, children um, 
<laughs> children initially struggle because it's um, they've got to fight against gravity. So if they haven't got that initially flexed position that is given to them um, from the later stages of the womb or by having normal muscle tone, then it's harder for them to bring their heavy arms away from the surface because the shoulders themselves pin them down. Same for the legs, that they can't flex their hips enough to actually move their legs away from the surface. So this can be because they're either high tone and they're so they're pushing away from the um, away from a flex position, so they're extending too much, or it can be because they're low tone and they're just too floppy and they just can't recruit the muscles to bring themselves up. If their head pushes back so far, it, they can often turn to the side. And if their head is spent most of the time to the side, then they can develop altered head shapes and we can have um, problems with the babies actually not finding where their middle is, not knowing what their hands are and not knowing what their legs are. Um, so yeah, so if we move on to the next slide. So what we do initially to support big children in these positions is to create a nest. So you can see from the pictures here how we can um, use one strap to support the baby's shoulders into a more flexed position. So instead of being squashed against the floor, um, I call it like the frog position with the legs out and the arms flat out up, um, then we can uh, sort of create that flex position where they can bring their shoulders forward and their hands reaching up away picture there you can also get an extra strap coming down from a vertical so that the head is even more supported if you're struggling to keep the child up you can then moving on to the next slide Claire we go. you can then put a roll at the bottom which will then support the legs in a flex position so as you can see this is a very young child she's only six weeks old and you can still support them in a very very flex position and you can see from the blur in the picture that she's moving her arms uh, moving her legs in a sort of a kicking motion when they're supported in this position and they've got their shoulders away from the floor, their, their head is slightly elevated, and their knees are slightly flexed, with their hips slightly flexed. It is much easier for uh, objects to be tracked left and right, so they can work on their eye control, you can work on head control, and that's simply by moving your head left and right as you talk to them, or by tracking toys. Um, it's also easier to then reach the hands up, and finding the midline, so hands to the middle of the body, so they can actually see what the hands, because when very early on children have no idea what their hands are no idea what their legs are no idea what their body is they don't know what they can do with any of it and how they can use them so having given that extra little support of reaching up and away from toys can really help with uh, developing awareness of those it also keeps them in a nice flexed position so that they can work on their tummy muscles so the flexion muscles is a is a great muscle is a great position for um supine lying um yeah, so you can see in this picture, sorry, go back one again. Sorry. You can see in this picture here, yeah, you can see in this picture here how um, this baby can easily reach down towards her knees and actually develop a bit of awareness of them as well. So yeah, moving on to the next one. So this um, this little boy is Logan. He, um, he's got much lower tone in his legs, so they're a lot harder for him to lift away from the surface and to get any activity. If he's not got any support there, then there's very, very little activity at all. But with a little bit of bringing it away, because we've made it that little bit easier, then we see we begin to see flickers of movement. And it's just something that we can work on and develop. But you can see that he's actually able to lift his hands away from the surface now because we've already worked on the more flex position. Okay. So when we work on these early positions, we're really trying to look forwards because what we generally find is that parents come to us and the goal is always walking or uh, walking for us for my occupational therapy colleagues it's uh, independent sitting and we might work on laying on our back but we're trying to think forward so um, if the baby's never taken their hands to their mouth how are they going to lift their arms away from the surface and if they can't lift their arms away from the surface how are they going to know to put their hands forward um, when they're sitting um, how are they going to learn to roll if they can't bring their shoulders over to one side or their legs over to one side because they're pinned to the floor. Um, and so it's those little skills that we look for, the um, individual building blocks of bigger movements to help them develop as a whole instead of working on individual local skills like, right, we want to stand now, or right, we want to sit now. It's, it's the whole development of the child that we look for and a variety of um, skills and abilities. Okay. So I think that's that one. Okay, so Nick, that was really good. Um, Logan and that little baby are super cute. <laughs> um, does anybody have at this point any questions about what Nick has run through with regards to backlaying? Um, if you do, feel free to type them into the 
to the little dash there. You might not. Maybe you have questions about some of the other ones, or maybe Nick has explained it so well that you don't need to ask any questions. But um, even if something occurs to you as we continue on, feel free to ask ask away. Well, okay, so we have one here. Well, so we've got one from William who's asked us, is the product uh, mainly suited to young babies and newborns? Um, William, no, it's... Uh, we emphasize the, the early intervention stuff because there tends to be so few products out there which um, can help the young children, but really as long as your child fits into the horseshoe supports um, and that there are sizing dimensions on our Firefly website that can help you with that, um, really as long as your child fits in um, within the, the size and the weight limits, you, you can use it generally up to around age four. Uh, but as I say, that really depends on the size and, and weight of the child individually. It's also it's quite um, versatile in that the, the parts that you can use, although we're talking about early development and early intervention here, you can work on much more advanced skills using the same bits of equipment, just in different ways. Yeah. There's another one here. Um. My, uh, I wish we had this a year ago. My daughter is hypotonic and still can't sit independently. She's 14 months now. Um, William, that's it's never too late to start, and I'm sure Nick would agree. Definitely. Definitely. De definitely not too late to start. I mean, I will still, so I work in uh, quite a lot of environments. Um, different environments with lots of different ages and I will still work on these early skills with children who are in their teens and I know I wouldn't use this bit of equipment because of the size but it's still using working on those skills so the rolling the reaching away from the floor um, with a child who's hypotonic it's a lot harder because it's, as you know developing the um, actual power to reach away is hard but you can still work on it you can still develop it and you can still get it stronger would you guys say as well that the, the accessories you can buy, it, all of the components are available individually as well? It's, is, is that something mm. that can help sort of buying additional horseshoes and things like that? Can, that sort of can help support a larger child as well, isn't, isn't that the case? Absolutely. Again, it depends. Uh, uh, go on. Sorry, um, it's a bit of a delay. It's hard to know who's going to go first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean... To be honest, by the time, you know, in practice, I, a child is getting older, um, you tend to use other bits of equipment, but there's definitely, you, you could extend the life of this product by buying additional pieces for extra support. Okay, okay should we move on then, Nick? Mm -hmm. So we've, we've covered our questions, and like I said, if, if anybody wants to ask anything else, please feel free. Um, we're going to move on to tummy lying or prone now. So, here you go, Nick. Yeah, so that'll be prone. Prone for me. So I'm sure um, if most of you, if the parents watching have um, therapists that they work with, I'm fairly sure that you'll have heard us harp on about tummy time because we do um, tend to encourage it quite a lot. The exception to this is that for children who um, extend too much, or arch their back too much and lift their head backwards, we would actually avoid it. So that's the, the, the one sort of clause I'll say for this bit is that if you haven't been advised to do it, do just seek the advice of your, uh, of your therapist. But the reason of the, that it is so important is that it really does work on the early head control. And if you think of it in almost the opposites in some ways of the supine lying, in that although we're, wor we're working quite flexed muscles to come forwards by bending our tum by um, yeah, by bending our tummy and by reaching up in the with prone lying we're working on taking our head backwards and extending our tummy at the same time we're also um, working on the power and the extension pushing pushing away with our arms and taking some weight through our hands so it really does develop the awareness of the hands coming forwards um, and that they can be used to protect the head from coming forward. So I, I, we call that protective extension. So if a child's falling, they know to put their hands out in front of them. And some children, that's something that they have to learn that doesn't come inherently. So working on tummy time, that's that's a great thing for that. Um, it's it's the position where they're quite flexed where they come home from um, hospital early. They're initially quite flexed and bent. The working in tummy can almost help straighten them out with their legs uh, and with their arms pushing away from the floor. Um, yeah, so if we want to work on. 
the the biggest difficulty that I have with um, with encouraging parents and tummy time is actually the tolerance. Um, so it's that they simply don't like the position. Now, the difficulty with that is that no one likes seeing their child cry and no one likes um, to make their child cry. So what we try and encourage is that um, little and often basically to, to build up to it. Um, so that's the that's the, the the worst thing about tummy time is is actually getting children to enjoy it. But it is one of those things that builds, and it is one of those things that gets easier usually. Um, other difficulties is that for a low toned um, child, it's often very the, the floppiness means it's really hard to get the head away from the floor. So they might need extra support on their hands because if you actually have your arms straight and you're giving the help to put pressure through the arms, it actually helps them to lift their own heads up. So it's um, a difficulty, but you can work around it. As I said before, if a children overextend and pull their head back too much, then this actually feeds into it and encourages it. So I'd sort of uh, avoid that one. Um, yeah. So next slide. So what we do with um, children in tummy time is the, the the main bit is the roll the initial bit is the roll underneath the chest. So you can see in the top picture there how we've just got a small roll underneath the arms, and it just takes the head away from the f surface so that it's you're not they're not stuck with the face down or head to the side without being able to do anything because they've got a gap there to breathe at the very least. Um, it also holds the arms forward so that they have the opportunity to push up from themselves. Um, the that you can see my hands holding the pelvis on the top picture. Initially, that's because the weight of the child is often um, quite far forward when they first start doing tummy time. So I'm bringing the weight backwards, so it's again easier for them to lift the head. So actually pushing down on the bottom helps the baby to or helps the child to lift up their head, and I can then keep it there by putting a strap over. And if we're still struggling to lift the head, I just give that little bit of a nudge on the forehead or on top of the head to help lift it up. Okay, so next position. So you can see there, I'm helping give that little little lift up on the head to try and talk to the baby and say hello. Uh, and so we're really trying to work on the getting some weight through the forearms, like you can see Logan doing in that bottom picture. So he's actually straightened out a lot more now. He's got his legs nice and straight behind him, so he doesn't need the strap to maintain the position. He's got his weight nicely through his forearms. He hasn't quite learned to push up through his hands in that position just yet, but we're working on it in other ways. So if we look at the next slide, so you can see in there he's got that weight through, especially on his left. Oh, I forgot to mention as well for the um, the difficulties for children with um, in tummy time is often children who have enlarged heads, whether it's through swelling or or syndromes or anything like that, because the actual weight of the head proportionally to the body is so great, it's often a very hard position to do. So similarly to the previous picture where I'm giving that slight little help to lift the head up, you can do the same. There you go. So you can do the same there and just give that like little bit of help. Okay, um, so the tolerance, oh, yeah. there, sorry, go back one slide, sorry, there's one more. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's, it's all right, we're getting keen. Um, so seconds at a time can um, build up to minutes, and it's also the way that we approach the, um, the position. So if you are a child and you're nicely in mummy's arms, and you then get placed down straight, on the uh, straight face down, I can imagine you would not really, really enjoy it. So it's also the ways that we approach the position. So playing, if you had, imagine Logan here on his left arm, you could lay next to him so he's lying on his side and then you could gently roll him down onto his tummy. So it's a slow movement down onto his tummy so that it's not a sudden, hello, this is the world, you can see everything because your head's looking up or this is the floor, you're looking down. That might also help increase the, uh, the tolerance of the position. Okay, next one. So the actual aims of tummy time. So initially, as I said, we've got the weight far forwards and then baby wouldn't be able to push up or take any weight through the arms. They're just a flexed ball uh, or a curled up ball on the floor. So initially, we want them to move their weight down from their chest to their abdomen and that's how we're helping with the strap on the bottom there. Um, we want them to start to push up with their arms um, and lift their head and turn. So initially, they wouldn't actually... Um, lift their head too high and all they'll do is look straight down at the floor until they get a little bit of weight through their arms and then they might actually lift it beyond the, the vertical, uh, beyond the horizontal. Um, so when you're thinking about that sort of a skill, make sure that you've got the toys appropriately positioned so that if baby can only lift and look straight down, have the toys directly below them and use books and flat toys which, is, which might hold their attention 
or make a mess um, and just have something that feels all squishy and horrible. Um, and then as they start to get a bit better at laying on their tummy, you can lift their head up further. You might think about angled toys, so the push walkers which have um, lots of buttons and sounds, you might think about those because they, they hold the attention up a little bit higher and might want child to lift up. So that, that's what we're aiming for, to get the head up, arms uh, weight down through the arms and um, the legs straight behind. Yeah, next. So the, the, the thing looking forward um, when we're working on the tummy, it's the it's power in the arms. So how much is it easier to play with toys um, if we've got strength in the arms? And we really do look when we're working on skills like this. We do look as far as um, handwriting when you're starting in school. If you've had your weight through your hands as an infant and you've been pushing through um, pushing through your arms and crawling and working on your tummy, it's easier and children struggle less with even learning how to write and it does work that far in advance that we're working on these skills. Um, if, if babies don't naturally put their hands forwards when they're uh, laid on their tummy to push up and if that's not a considered thing then it's when they're sitting and they start to fold forwards the thing that they would naturally do is actually lift their arms up away from them so it doesn't help them stop falling but it, it, it's their natural response so if we work on tummy time and they naturally come forwards then that's a lot easier and if they're on their tummy and they're moving weight over one arm and reaching for a toy, that's obviously a skill which leads to crawling because we have to do that when we're crawling, taking weight over one arm and moving the other. Yeah. Okay, so that was that was tummy lying. Thank you for that. Uh, are there any questions on tummy lying at the moment? Um, if there are, feel free to type them in there. Um, I think that was really well explained. I think so. No, I I think it's um, even for children without additional difficulties, tummy time can be challenging. Um, difficult, yeah, very difficult. And I certainly would endorse everything that Nick has said in terms of um, using the different techniques to try and encourage a child to be comfortable on their tummy. It's um, I almost thought Nick was an occupational therapist there, the way he was talking about handwriting later on. It's, <laughs> it's a, a major, major precursor for later fine motor skills. So I completely agree with everything that Nick has said. Okay, so we'll move on. Nick, is that okay with you? Move yep, on. yep. Oh, sorry, we just have one question here through for the, for the tummy time. Okay, so mm -hmm. if child has a feeding tube in the stomach, can they still do tummy time? Nick, what's your view on that one? Absolutely. Um, most, the, where pegs and feeding tubes are generally sighted on tummy, it, it, they depress into the stomach when you're trying to do tummy time. We don't, unless you have been told not to do it for a various reason, whether it's um, the only reason we've avoided it in the past is when it's been very new um, or infected. Um, but I imagine there are um, other reasons. So as, unless you've been told not to do it, then we always in, still encourage tummy time with feeding tubes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so on to side laying then. Okay, yeah, sorry, that's me, isn't it? <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> um, so the, the main reason we, uh, or one of the main benefits of early side lying is it really gets those hands together because um, babies haven't got to fight or children haven't got to fight against gravity to get their hands together and actually work with toys. So that's just such an easy benefit and children also often really, really like this position to start with because it's so easily interactive with their own hands and with their own body. They can look down at their knees and similar to laying on our backs. So as I say, the skills that we do in one position aren't exclusive to one position, you know. It, it's a very, you can see how this is a very similar position for um, this baby be, as laying on her back was when she was in the nest because she can reach down her to her knees. She is slightly flexed and she's really well supported, but the actual work that you do within it is very different because instead of coming gravity coming from the top, it's coming from the side. So it just it changes everything really. Um, side lying is very important because it's a transitional position. So you've got to go through side lying when you're rolling. You've got to get into side lying when you're moving from um, laying on your back to sitting. So it's it's very important to get used to this position. It's also very good to develop an awareness of the body. 
So I've often seen children who have diplegia when they were, um, or who have diplegia, and they never really rolled or spent a decent amount of time on their side, so they weren't, aren't really aware of it. And later in life, they can't. It's a lot harder for them to then move their weight left and right, left and right. And also, when you say to them, "Where's your side?" or "Can you draw a picture of yourself?" they they just don't know about their sides. They'll they'll the, the body picture that they'll draw will be much narrower because they just aren't as aware of their side. So it's it's really good for developing a body awareness. Um, so yep, yeah, next one. The difficulties with it is it's a very it's actually a very unbalanced position. So although some of us sleep on our side, what we do is we bring our knees up, we put our hands out in front of us and we support ourselves in that way. And even when we do that, we tend to slump either forwards or back, depending on how you are comfortable on your side. So actual side lying, like previously pictured, is very unbalanced. So for children who are high tone, um, being in an unbalanced position will really feed into that and make them even more high tone. So any <coughs> excuse me, any particular um, posture they adopt when their their tone increases, it, it can actually stimulate that. So that's why we make sure that early on we give that lots of support so that they don't feel unsafe. Um, children with low tone struggle with it because the the structures that we're balancing on top of each other, so the shoulders one on top of the other, or hips one on top of the other, are very heavy structures, so they might fall forwards or fall backwards. So that's why we need to give them that extra support. So yeah, so for the early um, sideline solutions is, is dead simple really. It's getting that nice flex position on the side. So that's why I've bent the orange cushion so that it brings the feet, the knees forwards. And that one's really important for the children who extend too much with their legs because if you keep them in a supported position with their knees and uh, hips flexed, then it's far less likely for them to then push out of it and almost roll onto their back because of their tone as opposed to their actual wanting to roll onto their back. Yeah. So then moving on from that, once a child gets more active, because it is a very active position side lying, as I say, it leads to rolling and, um, and, and getting up from laying to sitting, you can re reduce, progressively reduce the support. So the first thing I tend to take off is the um, pillow so that there's e it's easier for baby to move their head around and look up and, and reach, reach up. Then I either lower the support, or in this case, I've used a smaller um, roll to just support the pelvis on the side. So that's taken the, the heavy weight of the pelvis out of the equation so that the tummy muscles can work and re reach backwards behind and then go over forwards, which is essentially a rolling movement of the top of the upper body. And for Logan, that's what he's, he struggles with his legs because they, where, that's where he doesn't have much tone. So taking that out of the equation means that he can actually be very, very active in this position and he can have great fun playing games like that. And it's just working those tummy muscles really nicely. Uh, yep, and then you can then see that I've taken the strap away here. So he's so good now that his uh, pelvis doesn't even try and sneak away. It just, it stays really nicely because he's so stable with his trunk that he can use that. So what we're aiming for is um, to use the support in a way that we can be both static and working, concentrate working on our hands but then also active so you just change it a little bit and you can go from really fine motor control working on the hands playing with ball beads and things to more active where he's got to move left and right and up and down and things um, it helps with developing the upper limb skills by bringing those hands together early on and so that they have a bit of an awareness of their hands um, and it also despite the fact that the children are on their side again it helps develop their um, midline and body awareness so because they're everything is in the middle without having to fight against gravity. The hands are there, they're, they're looking at them. Um, yep, sorry, I've forgotten all that. So looking forwards, um, how, does, how do children know what their side is if they've never experienced it? So that's talking about the body awareness and the body schema. Um, how can they control rolling? Um, if they, they can't control their body whilst they're on the side. So children will often, instead of actually actively rolling, going through their side, they'll almost skip it. So they'll get into a really flexed position, get onto their side, and then go extended so that they don't spend any time on their side, which means it's not a very controlled movement. It's just a quick move from one to the other. And if that's the way that they're rolling, then they're unlikely to be able to control it when it gets harder by pushing up um, from the floor and getting into sitting. And how, do this, how would a child learn to move away from the floor if they can't move when they're on the floor? So that's one that often, you know, if children never learn to roll and never learn to do things, then they'll really struggle with um, 
balancing games and things like that because they're very um, they're, they're very limited in their body awareness and the just the general movements of their body. I have to off can't move. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any thoughts on that, Claire? Yourself? Well, well again, I would just agree. Uh, the occupational therapist point of view, um, very much everything Nick has said about developing body awareness. Um, very important part of century skills um, and yeah I think that was really excellent um, we'd be happy to take questions if anybody has any on sideline or in fact on anything right. Nick has spoken about this evening and if something occurs to you whilst you're maybe listening to a recording of this afterwards if you have a question um, feel free to send us an email at customer.inquiries at fireflyfriends.com and we'll make sure that that goes through to the right person and that you get an answer. Um, William, yes, go on ahead. You have a question about the product. Yes, that's fine. You can uh, you can let us know what you would like to know and uh, and we'll, we'll answer that for you. So that's us sort of, um, yes, Nick, there's just a final sort of summary about yeah. we're going to move on. Yeah, so the main thing that I would like, to, or the main point that I would say is that we work on the early positions as a whole, a holistic skills looking forwards, and we really do look forwards when we're working on these skills. So although when you get to a, um, well, most therapists or health visitors or most professionals that ask you questions will ask at what age did they roll, what age did they sit, what age did they stand, and that's a very linear sort of progression of skills. And although that is important, what is more so more important is the skills that lead to them. So it's more you look at the whole picture of, of, of everything that they can do, and that's why we work on these early positions, and that's why they are so important, and that's why we continue to work within these positions even at an older older age um, to develop those skills. Okay, thank you, thank you, Nick. Um, William has just come through with a question that we're we're just going to quickly answer. So he would like to know um, if it's easy to wipe clean because his daughter is quite often sort of sick um, during tummy time. So um, William, the answer to that is yes, it's it's possible to, to wipe the play pack clean. Um, it looks like it's super lovely fabric and it is, but it's also um, very practical. So you can use um, antibacterial wipes on it and you can also put the mat and all of the foam and the, the covers for the foam um, the components and the cushions that Nick has talked about, all of that can be put into the wash. Um, so if, if you have any accidents like that, it can be put in the wash and, and then dried on the radiator or, or out on the line. Um, and we have an, another question here, how padded is it? And do you need a yoga mat or something like that underneath? Um, no. 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 No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. It is quite padded. Um, it definitely offers enough um, padding to use it on a solid on a solid surface, and it also has a bit of a grip on the underneath of it. So, if it's being used on on the likes of a laminate or a or a hardwood floor, it's it's not going to slip about on you as well. Um, is it water resistant underneath that patch? That, that is non-slip is also water resistant, yes. And um, so that means that it is okay to put on grass and it's okay to take outside, yes. Mm -hmm. You can really take it anywhere. Um, if I could just yeah. add to the point about the, you know, sort of the, the comfort about the, the padding. Um, for these sorts of, this type of work that you're doing with um, younger children, it's actually easier for them to achieve some of the positions when they get some resistance from the floor. If they're on something too squashy, it's actually much more difficult yeah. for them to push up against. So um, it's we feel it's the right balance between firmness and, and comfort for these small children. Yeah, and I would agree with that. And that I've worked in children with various uh, body body sizes and including very sort of underweight, and it's that's never been a problem there. I'd also like to add on the um, the portability side of it. That's for me one of the best parts of the play pack in in how portable it is. Um, I take mine around with me, um, using with my patients, and it's it is very very light and very easy to take around. And when you're trying to work with children that spend a certain amount of days 
um, in childcare, certain amount of days with grandma, with parents, and we're trying to get practice these positions sort of throughout the day because you can't do um, like an hour a day of therapy because it, it, it just doesn't work practically. You've got to put these positions into practice during play. And so if you can take the, the, the equipment which helps you play effectively around with you, then you, it's, it's just so much easier to do. Okay, thank you, Nick. Right, so we're, we're just going to move on then and I'm going to sort of finish up for you. So um, we do have some additional resources if you if you like to have a look into anything after this. So you can go to the, the Playpack page, um, which is fireflyfriends.com forward slash Playpack. There's lots of information there, particularly sort of sizing information if you need to know anything around that. There's also videos. Um, there's little activity guides, little animated guides um, that sort of um, talk through different ideas that you can that you can do with Playpack, some of them similar to what Nick has discussed. Um, so we also have there's fact sheets as well that are available to download from the therapist section of the site. Just navigate your way to Playpack and you'll see them under the useful downloads. So basically everything um, in relation to, to activities that you can do and to, to the properties of Playpack and, and where you can take it, etc. It's all included in those. There's frequently asked questions there. Um, when you're sent this recording afterwards, you'll be able to um, click on that link there for next blogs, blog posts, or you can go to fireflyfriends.com and click on the special needs blog. There are there's lots of really great articles on there, including um, part one of Nick's series um, that we've gone through tonight, and part two is on there as well. Um, and then we'll be discussing part two um, as part of a webinar um, on the. 5th of April, Nick? 5th or the 6th? 13th. The 13th. 13th. The 5th, yes, on the 13th of April. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just <laughs> my blank there. So that's where we'll we going through um, sitting pretty. So that's transitioning from the early positions that we've discussed today. So please do, you'll, you'll, you'll receive an email um, if you're on our, if you're subscribed with us um, and feel free to join us for that as well. Um, hopefully you find this interesting. So I don't think we have any final questions unless anybody would like to squeeze one in there. I think um, I think we've covered think, everything that we so. have. Um, and as I say, if you do have additional questions after this, feel free to send us an email to customer.inquiries at fireflyfriends.com. And this is all of us. So um, yes, we'll say bye-bye now then. I think that's, about, that's us done for this evening. Cheers. Hopefully you'll join us next time. Thank you, Nick. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good evening.